Hello, welcome to Flory Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got AMK's weapon set number one. We're assuming some other weapon sets coming out with this one. 148 scale. If it's AMK, you're hoping it's going to be that gorgeous slip molded uh, stuff that they actually do. But anyway, we'll see about that uh, a little bit later. So first off, as you can see on the box from the box art, this is actually what we're going to get in here. Now, to be honest with you, I have still got quite a few of the Hasegawa weapon sets, which used to go through A through to D uh, with the different versions in there. And to be honest, they were pretty much a, a mainstay of what you would need because Hasegawa kits, traditionally, as you know, don't come with many weapons, perhaps a couple of air to air weapons or a few tank but generally if you wanted ordnance you'd have to go down the aftermarket route and their weapon sets actually were very good you had various things in there like mirrors and tears all the different types of free fall bombs the weapons and then so forth and so on but we haven't really seen anybody else have a proper go we know that maybe trumpeter had a small go at it but their weapons truly were awful in that kit uh, so actually now we've got a bang up to date one as you can see just down in here so this is quite reminiscent of the hasagawa kits we've seen before but what we've got down in here from my recollection is a lightning we got uh, sidewinder uh, we've actually got Sparrow, we've got Phoenix missiles down here again, and then we've obviously got Rocket Bods, we've got uh, GBUs, uh, we've got LGBs, we've got Mark 82s, uh, so forth and so on, right the way through, including tarps, pods, and uh, we've got the uh, targeting, uh, sorry, the um, uh, instrumentation uh, pods down in here for ACM and things like that. Okay, so again, should be quite a nice set and be one of those that fills in perhaps some of your weapons needs. So down on here, you can actually see what we do get. So we got the uh, 68s or the threes, obviously the different types of launchers down in there. The big JDAM uh, as well for the Mark 31s, and then uh, the, the Lima Mike Sidewinders, the Sparrows we said before, the Paveways. And then on the other side, as you can see, we've got one of these AN ASQ uh, pods uh, down on here. And then we've got the Bullwinkle uh, system as well down on there. And then GBU 38s and Mark 82s for the small ones. And the traditional sort of Lantern pod. And the Tomcat's favourite, obviously, being the Tarps pod just down in there. The first thing that you think, this is solid. Okay, and why is that? So if we have a double, is it sealed? No, it's not sealed. It's dulge in the box. We are greeted by, as you can see, a very nice decal sheet, which I have a proper look at at the moment. We've got obviously a assembly and uh, painting and decaling guide, but as you can probably tell by this, it's hopefully going to be in one bit, most of them all. And then you get this, which actually, from a presentation point of view, I think is absolutely lovely. So let's start over in this end. So <clears throat> we move these just slightly out of the way so <clears throat> over here we've actually got the tarps pod and the lantern pods so this is sort of your targeting pods and again i haven't looked in these as always okay so down in here we can see this amazing slip molding which i know it's getting more and more the norm these days but actually it never ceases to impress when you first see it and you've got to work out how it's all done so if we can even get in here it'll be handy okay so as you can see even these uh frames normally you have little pins and they all lock together and then down in here we end up we've got two by the looks of it if we just move to a closer type camera as you can see incredibly clever how these are molded in one piece so what this really means is at the end of the day if you're ever wondering about slip molding we don't have the traditional seam line down the middle okay so actually it's very very clever how this is done because you've got molding that obviously has come through in here and out right the way through giving you a 360 degree mold okay very very clever on these ones again right the way through so basically you've got your standard tarps pod down in here you'll have the oblique cameras down in here the one at the front is over on this side so forth and so on okay you know at the end of the day is it cheating i know i think it's just an absolute fantastic uh, thing now to have slip molding like this so really what you've got is some quite complex parts molded in one now without the need of gluey marks and you know perhaps some seam lines and various things down in there you can just get away with doing it just like that so really pod nose system nose goes on front of pod plate goes down on the top here and you're good to go you're absolutely fine with that okay so that's pretty nice you get two of those in there and then back here we get 
Okay, so here we've actually got the actual lantern pods. And again, beautifully done so they're together, so not rubbing round, so they just pop apart. And you've got the one in here. And again, because of this fantastic slip molding, which would go down in there, you can see no seam lines or anything else like it. The only slight downside if we do is the actual targeting pod sensor is in the stowed position with it wrapped round. So some of them you obviously mechanically can maneuver forward and tilt, but let's face it, normally if you're doing an aircraft on the ground, unless it's in testing, it'll be in the stowed position anyway, all right? So there's that one down in there. So you've just got two plates gonna go on the end. This will go down the other end. And then over here, you've got this slot is where the actual air cooling uh, scoop fits on just onto that one, just down in there as well. So it's really nice to see the original uh, lantern pod uh, done like this one. Obviously there's now the Lantin 2 and now obviously the newer sniper pods are out but we might see those with hopefully uh, the next generation or perhaps set 2 uh, of the actual uh, sets. So if we go through, I'm just trying to think what would be easiest to go, let's go through the interesting stuff first. So the next one up we've got the ordnance set really which is the Bullwinkle, the Sate pod and the Phoenix which the two pods are really ACMI type pods. <coughs> on these. Okay, so let's have a look at the ball winkle, which again, the ball winkle has been available with other things like in Tamiya, if you've ever bought their Falcon for the aggressor types and stuff like that. But the problem you've always had is actually it's multi-part, trying to get all the areas to line up. And again, you can see we've got two in here just like this. So we've actually got a very, very nice with the ball winkle pod with it all put in. So literally it's just a case of putting that onto the back end down on here and literally away you go. Very, very nice job on that one. So that's that one there. And then over here, and again, no trouble because these are already been put on. As you can see, you've got the actual antennas on the outside as well here. So this is technically a sidewinder, which is instead of uh, housing, is just packed through electronics to send out data on the aircraft where it is in the world, obviously for ACMI recording and things like that. But again, one piece, nothing to actually add to that whatsoever. So again, straightforward, no alignment issues, and you see the fineness of actually these aerials is what is the very, very clever mark. Not only does this not have a center seam, which is incredibly clever, okay, but actually you're into this situation where these aerials are as thin as you'd get with photo etch. So very, very clever indeed. Okay, so that's those. You also get further of those in there as well. So you're actually going to get two each of those. And then in here, we've got a set of four Phoenix missiles. So down in here, we'll just pop one off the top. Okay, one piece Phoenix missile. Again, no problem. So no center seam into that whatsoever, as you can see. Gorgeous detail right the way over. You will get an ejector pin. Clearly this thing has been pushed out at the end of the day here, so you're always gonna get an ejector pin, but these do tend to be on the top area where the mountain is, so you're not actually gonna see it anyway, which again, is another little bit of forethought that's very, very nicely done. Okay, and then down the back, you've got a hole for the rocket motor, and that is your rocket motor just down in there, just to pop in there. You're always gonna get a very, very faint seam, because obviously it's multi-part, slip molded, and all the rest of it, but it's not like a seam line traditionally. It's just literally a quick wipe with a polisher, and it's out the way and done, okay? So I know technically, I know you get people saying, oh, it has got a seam. Yeah, a very, very fine one, and probably you wouldn't even really have to worry about it. But again, the thinness of the injection molding on these back here, is absolutely gorgeous. Half the thickness, I think, if you'd found on anything else, certainly by Hasegawa's weapon sets and stuff like that. And again, if you look at the way the Hasegawa one goes together, it's a multi-part, different fins, trying to do alignment. This is completely all done in one of the highest detail, which is very, very nice indeed, okay? I'm not sure which version of the Phoenix actually that one is, but there we go, so we get four of those. So next box up in here, we've got the Sparrows. And again, we've got one of those uh, sate pods and with the ball winkle. So we don't need to look at those because that's just those there. Okay, and then down in here, we've got sparrows. So again, if we pop one of these off the top, getting these all back in is going to be a nightmare. Okay, really nice touch with these. We've got both seeker heads on here as well. So you've got your standard. Sparrow missile, uh, just like this. 
Okay, I'll just check my references with this one. So we have uh, the M and the F. So this is the different types of seeker for these. They have different noses on this and that. It's obviously got the rocket motor here at the back. But again, one piece right the way through. So no, again, alignment issues. And again, you can see the thinness of those fins. Very, very nicely done as well. So beautifully done all the way through. Okay, what else we got? Okay, so down in here, we've got the rocket pods. We've got the GBUs, uh, 38s. And obviously we've got Sidewinder. So the packaging is absolutely gorgeous. Okay, very, very nice on these. So, uh, well, let's go up, keep the air-to-air -air theme and then we'll go through ground ordnance. So, Sidewinder is always a problem getting the alignment and everything else. Again, cleverly storage little racks. Pop one off, keeping it nice, safe and clean. But the gyros on the outside, nicely moulded, right the way through, gorgeous detail. And with the head all in one, that actually looks pretty good to me. And you've even got the actual uh, connection cable from the missile to the aircraft. Again, you don't see that very often. In fact, I don't think I've seen that before as well. So that actually fits just down the back here on one of these areas. Okay, which will be down just in there. And that then is the mechanical connection between the actual uh, aircraft sending the information from the missile to the pilot. That's to say he's got a lock and away he goes. Okay, so it is a real nice touch of that little bit extra detail in there, just like that. So that's your standard sort of Mike Lima sidewinder with that head. Okay. All right. Okay, so have a look at rocket pods. <laughs> okay, so nice touch. You've actually got, okay, this is actually a very, very nice touch. You've got the pod itself, no problem at all, this being the back end, this being the front. And then on the front, you can either have fully loaded, ready to go, or you've got individual heads to be fitted into the rocket pod so you could put in any amount of rockets available into that one. So again, that's actually very, very clever. So you can either put the seven system down in there uh, and do it that way, or you could actually put the 19 in there on that one as well. So again, very clever how you actually get individual rocket heads to go in there. Whoever thought of that, you are a genius, because I didn't. So that's actually quite clever, expecting that on the other bigger one as well. Okay, so just down in here, we've got, this is the GBU 38, which is the small, one okay so we can just pick one of these off okay so technically this is a mark 82 with a kit okay making it gps guided obviously the gps information is sent to the weapon either via a targeting pod or completely before the mission to say where it is so technically he's just told to release on cue and the weapon finds its own target great thing about these is it's not weather dependent you don't need a targeting pod to tell you where it is or anything else like that okay so again, very, very clever uh, system on that one. Okay, a couple of things. It's one of these things of painting the kits around here and everything else like this. Technically, it's just a nose and a tail kit onto this one for steering information for the actual weapon. But again, getting in there and painting them can be a little bit of a thing, but we've seen other versions with photo etch which are added to them and things like that. They can be a little bit of a problem. Okay, very much a generic weapon these days with any type of modern aircraft, anything from A-10s through to F-18s through to F-15s, anything else like that, you know, will probably be using this type of weapon. So definitely something you're going to be using a lot, I would think, with your modern uh, builds. Okay, going up in size, we got the GBU-31, which is technically the £2,000 version uh, the other one obviously being a 500 pound version okay so down in here we are inundated with all of this lots of plastic okay so this one is done slightly different okay so this is the big 2000 pound version slightly different kit on this one as it has a body kit for the fins to stabilize the tail kit obviously this is a standard uh, Mark 82, uh, sorry, Mark 84, and then obviously fitting the tail kit onto this one as well. 
uh, giving it the GPS capability. Uh, okay, so again, very faint line running just down in here, but you can just sand that out with one pass. And again, beautiful raised detail right the way through. And the fins, I would say perfectly in scale, right the way through just like that. And again, no fin alignment. This is straightforward bolting it onto the back, literally as it would be in real life with the tail kit. Okay, very nice as well. So for your JDAMs, obviously you've got the small, uh, you know, Mark 82, and then obviously you've got the bigger 2,000 uh, pound GBU-31s. Okay, right, rocket pods, we've seen, this is just the smaller version of that one that we saw earlier. So this is the uh, 68 version, which is the smaller seven shot rocket system. So again, pretty much exactly the same as before. And then again, this particular one though, you have to load up with which one you want. You don't get one that's just fully loaded, ready to go. So you're gonna put in exactly the uh, rockets actually you want down in there like that, okay? So again, you've got different types of heads in this one as well by the looks of it. So you've actually got different types on here to put in as well for the actual warheads itself. Don't know much about this one, to be honest, for the seven shot system, but there we go. So you can have the very pointy ones or the more flatted ones just on there like that. Again, great attention to detail. Something very, very clever about that. Okay, so speaking of Mark 82, this is your normal standard one as we've got just here. That's a bit of help even. Again, one piece, standard nose fuse onto that one. Fantastic without the kit. So technically it's a GBU 38 without the, the kit on there. Again, a couple of ejection pins on the top here. Simple swipe to get rid of those and you'll be good to go with that one. But again, fins all in and done. Straightforward, nice fuse on the front as well. A little bit of wiring just to finish that off the detail wise and you're good to go. Very, very nice indeed. Okay, and obviously you get, uh, what have we got now? Six of those. So you've got six of the Mark 82s. Okay, into the laser guided ones. So down in here we've got two flavors by the looks of it. Where's the 38s? That's it. So, <clears throat> so last up we've got the laser guided bombs and again something a little bit interesting with these is the fact you've got an option for the aircraft falling, sorry, the weapon being released from the aircraft and literally, I don't know what it is, a second after release, the fins pop open. So down in here, as you can see, we've got your standard uh, paveway, or GBU-12, okay, right the way down here, which is basically a Mark 82 with a laser pod on the front, uh, seeker on the front. But as you notice here, you've got the fins closed up to go on, or what I love is this one, which has got the actual guidance fins opened and deployed. So these pop open a second after it's released from the aircraft, and then obviously guide it following the laser beam, riding it all the way to its target. So think of the things that we've, you could do here with a little bit of a diorama or a little in-flight model with this released and coming off the aircraft, because uh, obviously they pop open literally a second after release. So you could just hang it slightly below the aircraft and have what I have never seen anyone do before yet and have a paveway in flight coming off the aircraft. Again, numerous types, pretty much everybody flies with this particular type of weapon uh, on the, uh, uh, their aircraft, so you could pretty much attach it to anybody's. Okay, so that's the 12, or you've got the 16, which is the slightly bigger version of that one. So down in here, just give you a size comparison, GBU 12, GBU 16, so this is the bigger version of that one just down in here. So this is your sort of 1,000 pound version of that one again. So you both kits as well, open or closed, as you can see on that. Very, very nice. 
Okay, so last up we can have a quick look at the decal. So we've got one large sheet for all the areas on here. And actually they look really nice, good, solid color on those, as you can see. Everything obviously you'd expect for the banding and all the different weapon types on there, but you can see nice, maybe a little bit thick, but generally good, high quality, good detail right the way through on all of those. Right the way down to the silver on the actual armed area of the sidewinders and sparrows and things like that. Very, very nice indeed. Cool. And there we have it. As you can see in front of me, you do get a lot for your money. Uh, and again, it's taking you know, the aircraft, no problem at all. Things evolve, tooling gets better, materials get thinner. Weapons have always been sort of left behind as almost the afterthought. But this actually is a good step in the right direction. Being this slip molded system means we don't have any dodgy seams and the various things to get to, you know, line up. As we've seen the thinness on the fins and stuff like that is as good as what you'd find in photo etch now. So again, there's no reason for having out of scale fins on missiles and annas and antennas and aerials and things like that, exactly the same type of thing. Highlight for me has to be the rockets being able to load it up with whatever you want in there. So you could come back with a part load or just taking off with a part load or whichever way you want to do it. Small little gimmicky thing if you like, but actually I love that. I think that's a really, really nice thing. So it is that thing. If you're looking to upgrade your model, you might be looking at, you know, perhaps some aftermarket parts and photo etch. How about upgrading, upgrading your weapon system as well with something like the AMK 48 scale Ordnance Set 1. Thank <laughs> you.